Makers and Deluxes, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and I'm going to do a little bit of side-by-side comparatosity on DX9's Mitron and Make Toys Despotron. We're going to look at gun modes, then transformations, then robot modes. Because this video has been sponsored by the folks over at Toy Hacks, their Repro Labels upgrade sheets will be heavily featured in the footage for this comparison. And let's be honest, they have no stake in either of these toys being crowned the winner, they made stickers for both. Starting off with both tyrants and their respective takes on assuming the form of a symbol of death, there's one real clear differential. Despotron is enormous and slightly stretched out, while Mitron is more compact and closer to the size and shape of an actual gun. I keep making fun of it, and probably will continue making fun of it, but as far as holding either of these as roleplay pistols, Mitron's a whole lot easier to be dangerous with. However, there's one other thing Mitron has in his favor, and that's the fact that his handle is simply cleaner overall than Despotron's, whose level of panel separation just manages to trip over the line of going mostly unnoticed and becomes noticed. Both guns only include the arm cannon sight scope, so as far as accessories in this mode, it's a straight up tie. Getting to robot mode has got high spots on both of these guys. Mitron's clean gun mode splits apart and deploys its cool accordion mass shift trick right away to beef out the legs, which will make a return later on in the arms. The mass shift trick, that is. Despotron has got more fiddly stuff up front with his own handle panels, but then moves into lovely overtures of chunk swing. And that's where I feel Make Toys really pulls ahead here. The X9's Mitron has many lovely moments during the conversion, but the torso in particular is a gulf of less pleasant and more fiddly movement. Despotron's hip panels are really the spot for that kind of stuff in his own transformation, and much more of his body reshapes through satisfying actions that feel natural and fun to perform. If there were some way to keep the fusion cannon attached, like you can on Mitron, this would be a zero contest to me. Instead, it's like... I don't know, he still wins at transforming in my book, but you totally want to hang out with both contestants once the game's finished. All that said, I give credit to both toys for not being panel on ball jointed stick nightmares. I bought both figures partly because I found that what I saw of both of their conversion schemes was way more palatable to my tactile tastes than MP5s or what I'd seen of Apollyons. While the gun modes were fairly easy to quantify into comparable aspects, the robot modes of Mitron and Despotron are just as far apart as their two highly dissimilar approaches to the transformation. Mitron's slimmer shape brings him in line pretty well with official masterpieces like Soundwave and Starscream, while Despotron is as perfect a companion piece to MP10's silhouette as I've seen to date. Both tyrants bring a silver sheen, with no major mess-ups as far as coloration's concerned. I think Despotron looks maybe a touch shinier, while Mitron looks a bit more... burnished? Anyway, Mitron's head sculpt is a piece of plastic magic which probably gives him one up on Despotron, except Despotron comes with four really good face sculpt options versus Mitron's two. It's just that Despotron's are in a fairly non-derivative style, not really going full cartoon or full toy or full kooky anime. Mitron definitely leans more cartoon, which also leads him to have a collapsible gun scope that squishes together a bit to become a fusion cannon, while Despotron does the usual Megatron thing of having a gun scope on his arm that's called a fusion cannon. Stylistically, these two are nearly apples and oranges, so let's get down to the articulation game. Despotron is categorically superior in the posability department. Here's the thing, Mitron has a number of strong and unique poses. Both of these guys can assume a number of classically Megatronian postures, but Despotron can be played with, while Mitron runs into walls very quickly, thanks to his limited outward hip ratchets and impeded waist swivel. And then Despotron busts out stuff like double-jointed knees and two clicks of ab crunch, like a lovable articulatory tryhard. Before this comparison closes up, I figure why not take a quick and specific look at the Repro Labels upgrades too. Both sets do the same overall things to Mitron and Despotron, and the main thing among those things is the 3D textured printing thing that adds chest livery and a pile of pistol mode detail. Certainly there are other notable things, like the numerical scope rings and the various extra spots of toyetic color, but that raised and textured stuff is why you'd spend the cash on the Repro Labels treatment. Well, that and the shouting mouth filler for Mitron. I guess if I had to compare the gains these guys get from their label sheets, Mitron does pull ahead a little bit. He's got the mouth hole, the optic shininess options, and a slightly larger number of texture printed stickers. This comparison's come to a close, so it's time to crown a fully objectively superior winner between these two toys, right? Of course not!
Instead of that, I'm going to lay out the reality of the situation. Mitron and Despotron are both worthy options depending on what you're looking for. I vastly prefer Despotron myself, as his transformation, articulation, and general hand feel all outdo Mitron, and those qualities are very important to me. Also, I really like his aesthetic, as it both matches MP10 silhouette and reminds me of stuff like Transformers Devastation. However, Mitron's shortcomings are counterpointed by a notably lower price, and there is a demonstrable demographic of collectors who simply prefer his look to Despotron in robot mode. Also, while it didn't beat out the Despotron experience for me, Mitron's transformation trick certainly scored a respectable grade in my books. Despotron or not, that is a pretty cool conversion scheme. And Mitron's got a cleaner and more realistic gun mode to boot. So you've got to do a bit of work, if you haven't already, and identify what qualities matter the most to you. If you're tactile first, I think Despotron has a taller stack of plus points. But if you don't really dig his look, or simply don't care about high-tier posability and intend to primarily use him as a robot on a display shelf, Mitron certainly ticks a lot of checkboxes, especially with that home run of a head sculpt. What I rather like about these guys, especially alongside the upcoming MP36, is how all three figures have approached the equation of a high-end Megatron that turns into a pistol from three very different angles. Granted, MP36 is all photos at the time of this recording, but I don't feel any of the trio in question outright replace one another. They're all so different from their robot mode aesthetics to their transformation schemes. They're three very different but valid solutions to the same problem. Assuming MP36 has the tactile satisfaction of your official masterpiece Ironhides and Infernos. At that friggin' price, he better. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist. And hey, load up this comment section with the results of your personal priority assessments as transforming robot enthusiasts. As for me, I'm just waiting to see how MP36 turns out. Maybe we'll reconvene with these two, MP36, MP5, and Apollyon for some five-way comparison action later on in 2017.